When we're dealing with quadratics, um, we've talked about vertex form and intercept form, and now with standard form, I told you there wasn't necessarily a way when we're looking at the graphs, you just kind of have the graph it besides looking at the y-intercept or by using, you know, one of the techniques to solve for the roots. Um, but there is a way that you can kind of look at this a little bit easier using the sum and product of roots. The sum and the product of roots is going to allow you to write an equation into standard form um, based off of the roots without having to do some distribution. So when, I, when I'm talking about that, our standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So if I were to tell you that the roots were uh, 3 and 2, you'd have x minus 3 times x minus 2, and you'd have to do a bunch of distribution. So instead of that, there is a shortcut. Um, the shortcut is what we call the sum and product roots. So you didn't actually need to write this. So distribution here. Or the sum and product of roots, which states if the roots of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a cannot equal zero because then it's not truly a quadratic, and your roots are S1 and S2, then you can determine the A and the B and the C without doing distribution by taking S1 plus S2, which equals negative B over A, and to get the C value, S1 times S2 to give you C over A. Now, that looks really crazy right now and you're really not sure what that is, but it'll make more sense once we uh, have an example. So, for instance, let's say that my roots are negative 3 eighths and 5. So looking at this, it's a little bit harder when you're dealing with if you wanted to do distribution with a fraction. We don't like fractions normally, so this is going to be make it maybe a little bit simpler. So S1 plus S2. So in our situation, it's going to be negative 3 eighths plus 5. Well, I have a fraction and a whole number, so I'm going to actually convert this make it maybe a little bit easier. So remember when we're adding fractions, it has to have a common denominator. So it's going to be over 8. So negative 3 over 8 plus 40 over 8 is going to give me 37 over 8. So we're just going to leave that there for right now. Now, the next one is S1 times S2. Okay, so negative 3 over 8 times 5 over 1. We multiply straight over, straight across. We have negative 15 over 8. Sent the key here, and a lot of people will goof this up because they won't notice this. This denominator has to be the exact same. If it's not, you need to convert one of your fractions to make it so that they are the same. And I say that because the A depends upon it. So looking at this, our denominators are the same, so we don't have to worry about it. But A is 8. B, it's opposite of what you see, because this is negative B over A, and this one is C over A. So B is actually negative 37. C is negative 15, and we can write our equation. 8x squared minus 37x minus 15 and that's supposed to equal zero to give us our roots. So that right there is our equation. And that was not using distribution, that was just using the sum and product of roots. 
Sometimes, though, you're going to have something that's going to have an imaginary number with it. So, for instance, if you have seven minus two i and seven plus two i, now you know that it has to be both of them because we're having your complex conjugates. But this gets a little bit trickier, and it's really not that tricky. You just have to think about it a little bit. So the sum, we're going to add these two together. And the reason why we have to make sure that we have our complex conjugates is because it's going to cancel out a value, which is what we want, or cancel out the i value. So if we do this, the negative 2i and the positive 2i, they cancel out, so you don't even have to worry about it. There's no longer an i there, and that's why I'm saying it's, it's nice to have those conjugates. So we have 7 plus 7, which gives us 14. This is technically over 1. So again, this is negative b over a. Now, the next one, our product. We're going to have 7 minus 2a times 7 plus 2a. We're going to do our distribution here. 7 times 7 gives me that 14. 7 times positive 2i is going to give us, ooh, should have yelled at me, Mrs. Fish. 7 times 7 is 49, and I was jumping ahead. 7 times 2 gives me that 14i. My fault. Now, do the reverse distribution here on the other side. So minus 14i, and then minus 4i squared. So we know the middle part cancels out. And this changes to negative 4 times negative 1. And together, that'll give us 49 plus 5, which is going to be 54. So if we have 54, that's technically over 1. So this is C over A. So A is 1. B, remember, it's opposite of what we see. So negative 14. C is 54. We can now write our equation. Not 54. 50. I added 5. My fault. Struggling today. 53 over 1. So our equation is actually 1x squared minus 14x plus 53 and that equals zero. I'm sorry, long day, struggling with my math. But that's how you use it if you have an i variable. Um, it doesn't really add that much difference. It's just you got to work on your distribution and make sure that your distribution is correct uh, when you're doing your product rule. But the sum and product rules gives us a quicker way to use um, to figure out that standard equation for us.